So I lost 80 pounds and I want to tell you how I did it. Special episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. All right, so I've been kind of saving this podcast um, for when I hit a certain mark to share this. And a lot of people have been asking me because they've noticed through pictures, you know, through obviously sharing some of the journey that I've had, how did I lose weight, right? How did I lose 80 pounds, especially during such a stressful time, uh, you know, with COVID and things like that. And I know everyone's journey right now, everyone's journey all the time is totally different. So the first thing I want to say, and I don't know if I have to say this, but I think it's really important is that like, I am obviously not a doctor, so I don't want anyone uh, taking my advice and actually thinking like I'm telling you what to medically do. All I want to do is just kind of share a little bit about my journey and my process. And my journey is not this linear straight line. Like I did this and then all of a sudden everything worked, et cetera. It's, it's a process. And so my hopes is kind of sharing my story and maybe you take a little bit from here, take a little bit from there and you figure out um, what works for you. And I'm not just talking about weight loss. I'm talking about how we set goals, things that we do uh, in our work. But for anyone who's known me for any period of time, just understand that my journey with weight loss is something that I've been kind of struggling with my entire life. I remember as a kid, I actually quit hockey uh because i got a certain age and i remember kind of being really teased about being heavy and i was really struggled with it and i just i didn't feel good about myself and then i actually sprouted out uh sprouted out not out but up and uh i I lost some weight at the same time and i was kind of joking with my brother that i I, I'm, i'm almost on the path to lose 100 pounds twice So this is something I've struggled with. I kind of feel that I've I've figured this out, how to maintain, things like that. But I honestly don't know where I'm going to be in the journey. And it's something that has affected me emotionally and mentally, not just physically, and kind of sharing that. And a lot of people saw um, this picture I posted on Instagram of just me uh, having uh, some changes uh, and you can see Weston Kieschnick he's a good friend of mine we took this picture and he cut himself out uh, when we were in Hawaii together and this is actually in 2019 and I'm recording this in 2021 right before my 46th birthday and after having lost 80 pounds and actually right now I've lost 84 pounds And so what you see here is not something that happened overnight and something that didn't even just happen in the last year. This is something I've been struggling with. And I remember seeing a post of myself uh, on Instagram dancing with my daughter. And I remember seeing this and really struggling not only with how I I looked in the the video and kind of knowing how I felt and how much I was struggling but also struggling with my, I know it sounds my back. Like I felt really um, a lot of the things I've been kind of dealing with physically. I just said, Oh, I'm like, you know, I'm getting to a certain age. So these things just happen. But really, I remember kind of bending over in that video uh, when that was being taken and having to pick Clea up because my back was so sore. And I know it was because of, you know, weight I was carrying and things like that. And, I saw this on, I think it was Instagram or something, this Jim Gaffigan quote, and I thought it was really interesting. He says, you know, have you ever see a photo of yourself and it kind of ruins your day? And whether it's a photo, uh, whether it's a video, I, I felt that a lot. And a lot of times because of the work that I do, because I travel and speak, I, I had a perception of, you know, kind of what I was and, and then I'd see something totally different and I, I really would struggle with it. So this, like I said, um, this has been something that I've been battling with and I've been trying to kind of work through um, and and share some things. And I I had, you know, a couple couple moments where I started realizing some stuff and uh, some kind of turning points. And and I've talked about this in Innovate Inside the Box that there's these moments where you actually, you just, it kind of snap and things change for you like just moments right like i had been dealing with weight uh, my entire life and then on this journey where i've lost you know 
80 plus pounds, there, there's a couple things that kind of snapped in me. And I, I think, you know, really, you know, being the father of two girls is really important to me and kind of really struggling with that whole process. But also because of COVID, I, I knew I was in the obesity range. And that's one of the indicators of, you know, of where it can be, COVID can be most fatal. And again, like I said, I'm not a doctor. This is just what I'm reading, things like that. And so starting to think like, hey, I am in this space where if I was to get COVID, I wouldn't be as safe. Uh, So I gotta gotta focus on how do I take care of my health? Because I have two children I have to take care of and really being thoughtful of it. So I, I actually got... Uh, a lumen device and lumen if you're out there you know if you want to sponsor the podcast that'd be awesome but i got this lumen device and basically and i've talked about it and i'm not by any means saying hey if you get a lumen you will lose weight this is a surefire thing but but it helped me it helped me in my process and like i said i think everything's on journey i've tried so many different things some things have worked uh some things haven't but i've learned through each process of you know things that i could try different And so I I got this Lumen device and basically what it does is it actually just, um, you blow into it and you can do multiple multiple times a day. I only do it once a day. I do it in the morning when I wake up and it gives you kind of a running rate of your metabolism to kind of see how you're doing, to kind of see where you're at. And so it, it says like, hey, your metabolism is really low, like stay off the carbs eat higher proteins some days my metabolism is better and said like hey you can eat more carbs things like that so it it, in the morning what it did is it gave me a really good indicator of like what should i eat in the day like what how should i eat and like i said why it works for me i'm not typically a hungry person in the morning and so just kind of putting in my head like hey here's kind of my strategy for eating because i've worked out forever but eating has been an issue for me and and so i was like okay i'll try this out and then i think about three or four days in every monday uh just kind of where you're at and maybe it's just mondays was the day for me it then actually said hey we need to you need to weigh yourself so you can track you know how you're doing and i was nervous about that i was really nervous i honestly had not weighed myself in years and the reason i had not weighed myself in years because i did not want to see the answer i did not want to see the answer to this and i actually had in my head what i thought i weighed and i was like okay i'm going to do this so i I get on the scale and what i thought i weighed which you know was not something i was happy with i was actually 40 pounds more than that so that shook me and i remember i remember actually like going down laying in bed and being upset and really bothered by it and really threw me off and then I kind of caught myself I said okay well you got to figure this out and I saw this quote and again I have no idea where this was and I just I don't want credit for it I just want to share with y'all and it just seemed to happen right at the same time that I I I weighed myself for the first time in, in honestly years And it said, you know, it has taken you years to get into this mess. It will take you much less time to get out of it. And it kind of bothered me at first. And I was like, yeah, that that actually kind of makes sense. And, you know, if I stick to it, if I focus on this, because my weight had kind of slowly accrued uh, from traveling all the time, eating unhealthy, not having routines, uh, things like that. And if I, you know, put my mind to this, it's going to be hard work, but I can, you know, maybe figure this out. And I actually had been weighing myself and I'll kind of talk about that because there's some things I want to share, some strategies that I've used that I hopefully will be helpful to you. And just this past week, I actually had, you know, measured my weight and uh, I'd met, I had set as my first big goal to lose 80 pounds. And uh, I, I, I shared this picture and this is it. And I look much, much different than what I did. But like I said, this is not something that I just committed to in the last, you know, I started this journey with Lumen in August of 2020, but I have been struggling with my weight and it just popped up in um, on my phone, uh, an old story that I shared. And this is from like early 2019. And I had been at, and then that year I had been running um, 
I've been running at least 100 miles. I actually had started Aptive. I'd run 100 miles uh, a month minimum. I actually, by the end of the year, was running at least 200 miles, and I was not feeling um, any lighter. My clothes were not fitting better. In fact, I felt like I was gaining weight, even though I was running so much. And I saw this video, and you know, even when I was uh, uh, just to show you, just to show that I was like still trying to, you know, figure this out. Hey, good morning, everybody. George Crows. Uh just about to start my workout this morning and uh, just a really quick thought. Uh, just some days you get frustrated. I've been working my butt off the last year and uh, yeah, I'm not seeing the results that I had hoped that I would see. And it can be defeating and tough and you know you want to quit, but I guarantee you if you quit, you won't see those results, there's no way. So you gotta keep going, keep pushing, maybe try some different things, but just keep trying. So. Um, that's what I'm getting in my head right now, and I hope I uh, help someone else, you know, do something today to help themselves get a little bit better. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks. And so I share that because I think it's really important to understand, and there's this uh, quote from Jim Valvano, and he actually says it's from his dad, and he said, uh, hard work is not a guarantee of success, but not working hard is a guarantee you will have no success. And I think it's, like I said, this is not just about weight loss, it's about how we set our goals, that I was still working hard, but I wasn't seeing success. But sometimes we just continuously do the same thing over and over again, but harder, but we actually gotta figure out different directions. And this uh, image from Dimitri Martin, I find really fascinating. He actually, you know, I think did this as a joke, but it's really accurate. And talks about success is kind of this, it's not a linear process, it's up and down, it's all over the place. And there are downs even when there's ups and that video you just saw or you just heard, depending on you know how you're consuming this, is is actually, you know, those downs. And that video in 2019, I could have made it in 2018, 2017. I tried this, I tried this, I tried this. And I I, I could easily look at those things like, hey, I tried V Shred, you know, this six week workout and said it was a total failure what a waste of time but how i look at it is like hey it didn't work the way that i wanted but what did i pick up from this what did i learn from that process hey i tried aptive i did the running thing it didn't work the way i wanted it to but what did i learn from the process and i think that's how we have to look and you think about this just not you know many of you listening are obviously educators um think about this we know in school is that sometimes we just want this constant up but that's not how it works right but even through failures what do we learn through that process what do we take away from the process of failing when things don't go the way that we actually want them to go and and then actually take that learn from it and then apply it to the next step and it doesn't mean that we continue on this process it doesn't mean that we you know just keep going hard in the same, same direction it's like hey let's maybe change directions take some of those lessons apply them to the next phase and like i said this last week i actually you know showed that I've hit my first goal. And you know, I, I think for me, one of the things is just continuously setting goals is important. I just wanna show you, um, you know, one of the things that I use to kind of like help me keep track of where I started, where I wanted to go, and, and where I ended up in this phase of the journey. Okay, so what you're looking at right here is my board of like results. And you can see up here, I started at 320. This is August of 2020. And I set a goal here of 240, right? So you can see, uh, this is my first weigh in, but then here's where I started taking measurements. And yeah, I've been basically losing like two to three pounds. But today is a good day because uh, last week on my Monday weigh in, I was 241, and today I am 238. So I checked off my first goal. Pretty cool. And that's a little bit hard for me to watch because um, I'm proud. I'm proud of myself. And I've talked about this before. Like we will easily share that we're proud of others, but we rarely say that to ourselves. And it's been a journey. And it's interesting because it seems like it's taken a long time, but also went by really quick. And I think that's an important thing to remember is that, you know, if you kind of set your mind, if you kind of work through this stuff, you can, you know, get to a certain point. And uh, I, when I, I when I shared this video, it reminded me of legitimately one of my favorite quotes. And I know I say I have like 
I got 10 million favorite quotes, but I love this one. And I, it's, there's, there's many variations of it. I think a lot of people have taken credit for it. So I'm just going to say, you know, it's kind of anonymous. It's maybe a little bit generic. Um, is that it takes years of hard work to become an overnight success. And so that's what I wanted to do today. I didn't want to just people to see like, oh, well, you know, it must have been easy. No, no, it's a process. And, you know, even though I've seen results over the last seven, eight months, uh, it has been years and years of dealing with this, taking new ideas, taking new things that I've trained. And like I said, if, this is not just about weight loss, where are you, you know, thinking about goals in your life, things that you want to try, things that you're working towards and going through that and kind of seeing where that can actually end up. So I want to just, first of all, talk about some of the eating habits. Like, and I said, I have been working out forever. I've, I've always worked out and you know, we all, we, I could tell a story, you know, I can share a story that many of us have is that when I was younger, I could basically, you know, eat quite a bit and just work it off. But that did not go away. So I'm like working out, you know, at a certain point in my forties, two hours a day, like legitimately two hours a day, not, you know, losing weight. And so really what Lumen helped me do is kind of figure out some of the things that I needed to do for my eating habits and changing that. So I just kind of want to talk about um, what were some of the things that I do. And so like, like I said, the first thing I did was start with that Lumen device. And I swear by it, but I don't necessarily think it will work for everybody. It depends on who you are and how it, it helps you and kind of, you know, it, but for me, what it done is that when I blow in the morning, or give me a list and say like, hey, you know, your metabolism based on what you did yesterday, blah, blah, blah. I don't know how the science behind it, to be honest with you, but it helps me. And so it goes from like a one to a five. And then uh, it tells you if you're a one, that's the highest. I only got one once. And that was like a really exciting day. But, you know, five is like, hey, you've, your metabolism is slow. Stay away from carbs, basically, and protein. So like a lot of people like will go on keto diets, things like that. I don't really know. I don't really think about that. Um, I just, I kind of focus on the proteins, but that really set the tone for my day. And I found that I was less hungry when I kind of knew like, hey, these are the things I was going to eat and kind of set that up. Um, the one thing I will tell you that's honest is that um, I, I don't cut out like foods I love. I just, you know, kind of have special days for that. So like every Friday, I'm a big pizza person. I have pizza every Friday. So um, doesn't matter what I blow I'm having pizza on Friday, but the other days, you know, like I might have a little bit bread, a little bit less bread, things like that, depending on that. And again, not a doctor, but just really kind of focus on that. And so the second thing is really how I focused on eat, having a routine. Okay. And a routine for me has been really important. So, uh, I, I don't necessarily do like, I guess I kind of do intermittent fasting, but I, I don't typically eat after 6.30, 7 o'clock. That seven o'clock would be the latest. And uh, I have lots of water and I'll talk about that in a second. But uh, I don't really eat till the next day until usually 11 a.m., 11.30 a.m. And I'm not really hungry. If I can, uh, if I, sometimes I'm a little bit hungry when I fall asleep, I then go to sleep and then I wake up and I have no appetite at all. And even by the time I eat 11, I'm not, not really hungry, but I just kind of eat as a routine. And I, I rarely eat because of that. I rarely feel hungry. Um, I just eat at certain times. And that routine has really been helpful for me. So every day I'll have um, a, like a kind of brunch, you know, ish. And then I'll have a snack, whether I'm hungry or not, basically at the same time. And I'll have dinner, you know, whether I'm hungry or not at the same time. And it's basically kind of like this feeding window that I have. So I can eat during those times. And the the third thing kind of tying into this is instead of like really watching calories. And again, this is what's worked for me. I have focused on protein. So, you know, looking at really high protein foods. What are some of the foods that I would eat? Um, you know, and so I, I make sure that I have lots of protein. So I'll have like protein shakes, um, uh, you know, chicken, eggs, things like that, things that are like really high protein. And what I found is that when I actually started like upping and making sure that there is a certain amount of protein that I have, and I don't measure it, I kind of assume, but, um, you know, packaging, things like that. When I keep that protein up, I think it actually has really helped me with my appetite. I seem to be less hungry and there's science behind this. I'm not the person to give you that science, but yeah, the, the protein has helped. Um, the fourth thing I've done is I drink 
uh, water all day. So even right now, I got a bottle of water sitting beside me, and I always have a bottle of water. And, and you see, and I used to actually not drink water. I actually haven't had a soda, uh, which I would have like basically two to three a day. I haven't had soda in August since August of 2020, and don't miss it at all. Have no cravings for it at all. But I drink a ton of water. So. Um, sometimes when I get hungry, I drink water and it's good. And yeah, that, that has really helped. And, and then the last one that kind of ties into exercise is I set a step goal for each day. So I, I do a lot of weightlifting, but I make sure that I get in a certain steps. Right. And I think for me, like I, I've always loved running. I've always loved, you know, kind of cardio exercise. It's not something that's a good way for me to kind of tune out, but kind of those things tie together have been really helpful so i wanted to talk to you about some of those habits and like i said for me the eating has been the biggest thing I, I i love working out i love exercising but it hasn't given me the results and here's a, a little analogy on why this is so important and I, I thought about this is like how is the eating and the exercising connected for me personally so um i invest and have you know money in stocks and things like that you know think about retirement things like that and so the best way I can say this is that even eating is like your savings account. That's your money. That's your capital. And exercising is your compound interest, right? But the thing with compound interest, if you have no money, what's it compounding? Nothing. So every when I would eat better, it seemed to put more savings into my account, which actually when I exercise, the compound interest would actually be more effective. And that's the easiest way I can explain it and kind of tap into that. So kind of looking at those habits, that has really helped me. But then the other part of this too is kind of like the connection between habits and goals and how I've done that and how I've kind of gone through that process. So I love this quote from Michael Jordan. And I'll tell you, one of the things I've watched, um, I do some runs, we have a treadmill and uh uh, I do runs and I do a long run once a week and I watch The Last Dance and I've watched it probably like five times over. I watch it. It's just a motivating thing with me while I run, just easier to do. And I love this quote um, from Michael Jordan. He says, I always set short-term goals. As I look back, each one of the steps or successes led to the next one. And really just kind of seeing like how do those successes, how do those things, you know, kind of kind of connect. And so really thinking kind of the habits, systems and goals and things like that. What does that actually look like? So I, I kind of broke this down on on what does this look like? So I have these daily habits that I do. I have some weekly goals. I have some medium goals and then I have my long term goals and the habits really lead into the goals. So, for example, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the habits have to do a lot with my eating. The routines, things like that have been really helpful. But also step goals are really important. And like, for example, I set a, a, a number for how many steps I'm going to get every day during that week before I finish exercising. And that's a habit that I have every single day. When I eat, how I eat, when I eat, that's a habit I have every single day. And those habits lead into the goals. Uh, one of the things that I've done and I saw as a good practice is actually um, weighing yourself every day. And I read that somewhere. And again, worked for me, might not work for you, but that was really helpful for me just to kind of see how I was doing. Now, I, I told you earlier that I don't actually, um, the one day I, I eat poorly is on Friday and I have something that is like Saturday, I do not weigh myself because I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to take that away from me. I, I, I like having that one good meal and, and you know, growing up in a restaurant, food is a big part of our lives and I enjoy it. And so, but here's the other part of this too. One of the habits that was really helpful for me, I don't eat anything I dislike. I actually enjoy every meal that I have and kind of finding foods that worked within my goals and worked within what I was doing was really important. Uh, I'm not eating like just tons of broccoli every single day, but I do have vegetables every day and I have chicken and I have things like that. So those daily habits have been really helpful. The, the second thing is like now, what do the habits lead to? Where is the accountability to what these habits are leading to? So my short term goals and these are weak goals is I try to actually um, lose two to three pounds a week and that 
goal for when you're in weight loss is typically seen as, as a reasonable goal. If you're trying to lose like five to 10 pounds, it's probably gonna be water weight. Like I said, not a doctor, but that is not sustainable uh, for long periods of time. And again, it depends where you are in your journey. Uh, but two pounds is like um, kind of a, probably the safer way. Um, could be one pound, could be two pounds, three pounds is kind of a max. And just kind of what I would do is that I would set out those goals and I wouldn't weigh myself. I, I mentioned I, I weigh myself daily, but I don't weigh myself multiple times daily. It's just when I wake up, see, you know what I weigh. And, you know, maybe kind of give me an indicator of like how maybe something I ate affected me, things like that. But I would once a week on Monday, write down what my weight was and I would write it down, uh, you know, and I would kind of see those two to three goals. And so that's a good way for me to kind of actually go into those like short term goals like what what am i trying to do and seeing you know as those goals stack how do they get to the big goals and instead of just thinking about like having a short term and then a big goal i kind of also did like a medium goal so um, i would use this scale and the scale is connected to your phone like everything you can get a fridge to connect to your phone uh, but the scale can connect to your phone and i could track my weight but instead of actually tracking my weight every day on that scale, kind of going through the ups and downs, I had that chart for the, you know, once a week weigh in. But then um, every, the first of each month, I would actually see, uh, I would measure how much I've weighed. And so since August, I've basically lost between eight to 10 to 12 max uh, pounds per month. And so sometimes when you're getting frustrated, that's a good thing for me to look at kind of seeing like, hey, you, you know, maybe you haven't had as good a week as you wanted, but you can kind of take a look at like, hey, you've, you've, you've had, you know, big chunks through that process. And so that short term goal helps to get to that medium goal, which then leads to the big goal, which, you know, I hit this week. And kind of what I did, and I think uh, Vernon Wright, you know, I've caught content. He's big on vision boards. A lot of people, I, I wrote that goal down and I, I put it as like, when I say this, it's, it's not my big goal. It's not the end game, but it's my big goal for now. And once I hit it, I readjusted. I've now set a different big goal, but it's not as, you know, far from where I, I want to go. But having that and just seeing that each day and kind of like seeing how I'm getting closer and closer and closer. So just to kind of recap, having those habits and going through that process, but then having the small, medium and long-term goals and like the measures, like how do I see that I'm making progress? Because I think when I was doing this before and I was like working out, I didn't have any measure. I maybe some ha had some good habits, but I had no measure. But once I said, okay, do these habits work and what are the measures to show you? Um, that was really helpful to me. And like I said, not just with weight loss, it can be in other facets of your life. And honestly, I've applied these, these things um, to other aspects of my life. For example, I blog once a week. Well, those once a week blogs have led to a couple of books. And so those times, and you know, I'm, I'm currently working on my third book and, and you know, the habit of writing has kind of led me to, to doing this. And then, you know, when I get to that book part, then I set goals of what I want to try to write in a day. And so those, those things have really connected to me. And so I just, that's what I wanted to share just to kind of, you know, anyone who's going through this, anyone who going through this process, but just some, you know, final kind of takeaways and, and really just kind of be patient on your journey. My journey on this other things is going to be different from yours. And I'm no guru on this or anything like that. I just wanted to share and just trying to find positives in the time when you're really struggling and learning from some of those failures that you have because I feel that if I didn't learn from those failures I would just see that as, as totally wasted time but I tried v-shred and I honestly I think I gained weight when I did it but there are some really good things I learned doing that program and I'm like okay this helped and I did aptive which was like got me to run and there's 
didn't help me lose weight, but there's some good things. And then when that lumen, when it kind of connected to, you know, how I ate and thinking about that, when I started connecting all the things I learned from the other programs into this, because I actually don't think I would have been successful using that lumen if I didn't have those other things, if I didn't have some of those things I developed, but also like thinking about some of the things I applied from outside of it, you know, weight loss and physical activity, you know, uh, James, ha James Clear talking about, you know, uh, atomic habits, things like this, and just kind of connecting all those things together is kind of that process. And sometimes we feel like when we are on a program, we don't hit our goal or whatever, it's a failure. It's just a process of learning. If you decide to take some of the things that you've applied and actually apply them to the next phase. Um, I think that to me is really important. And, and that leads to the second point is really kind of like whatever you're doing, um, whatever you're trying, whatever your goal is to get to that point where just don't give up, but it doesn't mean just don't give up and but continue going the same direction isn't always the best advice. And think about this personally, right? Um, maybe you've been in a relationship with someone and it was terrible and you'd stick with it, stick with it, stick with it. And then, you know, you, you do everything and then you say like, hey, that wasn't a good idea. And then you decide to go in a different direction. And it doesn't mean you failed if you take some of your learning. And I think sometimes we... We try the same thing over and over and over again. And, and then when it doesn't work, instead of like learning from the process and redirecting, we just try the same thing over and over again, even though it hasn't shown to get the results that we want. So be okay to change course. And like this, this is, you know, even think about this in your career. Sometimes you, you know, you're in a job you might not like, something that you don't, and then you think it's gonna change, but ultimately, you moving on to something else is not you quitting it's you finding a direction that that works better for you and i think that's important and i think the last thing i want to share and i haven't talked about this at all is surround yourself with people that cheer you on surround yourself with people that you know got your back and have this and i think a lot of times when i um I could have a conversation with somebody and you know they would totally negate the work that i'm doing or negate something and i and i i'm 100 percent i've been that person for other people and i try not to be but i don't want to say like oh this is what other people do and i've never done it of course i've done this and so have you listening to this too right but i think when you're trying to make progress and you're thinking about and this is something that COVID has taught me that i'm very cognizant of who i surround myself with you know where i spend my time you know um who I interact with even on social media. If I'm connecting with someone who every time I connect with them makes me feel worse, I'm not gonna connect with them anymore because that doesn't just affect me, it affects my kids because I become grumpy, it affects my kids, then it affects my workout. Little things like that start to kind of add up on you and the mental weight, honestly for me, started to put on physical weight. And so when you're, I would rather spend less time with people that are cheering me on and have my back. And it doesn't mean they're not challenging me. That's actually, I think one of the things that I think I really appreciate is that people challenge you because they want you to get better. Some people challenge you because they wanted to see you fail because they get some weird happiness out of that and that's their thing and whatever. But I'm very cognizant of that. And so when you're going through really tough times and you're struggling, you need those people to be there to cheer you on. So be thoughtful of who you surround yourself with. Um, and that really has, has helped me um, through this whole process. And so I just wanna share a little bit about my journey. I hope that it helps you if you're trying anything, you know, with physical fitness, getting healthier, things like that. Everyone's journey is different, but I hope, I think a lot of these things I shared will apply to other facets, not only of, you know, weight loss, but other things that you wanna achieve. And I also wanted to record this if, I'm ever, you know, um, struggling again that I can watch. And also my kids can watch in the future so they can see some of the things that, you know, I gone through to find some success in this space in my life. I really appreciate, appreciate you listening. I hope this has been of some value. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening. Take care.